Hi, I'm Dr. Arthur Bradley, author of Disaster Preparedness for EMP Attacks and Solar Storms. So recently I did a video on how you use a conductive gasket to seal up a, a galvanized garbage can um, to use it as a Faraday cage. And it was pretty simple to do. You basically use two very small gaskets to go on the inside sidewall of the, the lid of the can. And I've got that uh, video as well as some pictures on my website, disasterprepared.com. So that works well for a galvanized garbage can, but what about for an ammo can? So I had folks write me and say, yeah, you know, I've got these ammo cans, I want to use them as Faraday cages. How do I seal them up where they'll work well? So what I did is I, I got a large ammo can. Um, this particular one, oh, is probably uh, what, about two feet in terms of its, uh, its width, maybe 16 inches tall, or maybe eight inches deep. And so I, ha I needed a large one because I have to be able to put my test equipment inside of it. Um, but the principle will hold true whether you get a smaller one or not. So what you have to do is you have to go to the lid, you have to take the lid here, and you have to remove the rubber gasket that's inside the lid. So in this case, I went ahead and pulled out the rubber gasket. And then you have to go in and sand or dremel. In my case, I used a dremel tool. You have to dremel down to the metal all the way around where the gasket sat. There's, there'll be a paint there, otherwise you won't get good metal to metal contact. So use a Dremel tool or a sandpaper to get all the way down to the metal there. And you're going to do the same thing on the top of the can so that you have exposed metal on the lid. Maybe a little hard to see on the can here, but I took a Dremel tool and some sandpaper and I went all the way around the top of the can to get metal exposed there as well. So the idea is simple. You're going to replace the rubber gasket with a conductive metal gasket. All right, so this gasket that we pulled out we're going to find a conductive uh, metal gasket and we're going to put it in in its place and then we put the lid on top of the can and seal it up we'll get a nice metal to metal seal all the way around so what I did is I, I bought about oh, 15 or so different kinds of gaskets and mainly it's their sizes that are different I wanted to find one that would go in easily that was the right thickness that would allow it to seal up and make good contact so you can see how this sort of these gaskets look they're basically a, a squishy foam with a metal fabric over them and they have an adhesive along the back, along a small portion of the back, so that they'll stick down into the, into the channel. Now the adhesive is pretty darn strong, so once you stick it in there, it's hard to pull them out. You have to really kind of rip at it to pull them out. Um, so what you have to do is you take, you take the gasket and you, you cut it into four pieces. You basically create a left side, a right side, a top, and a bottom, and you butt them up against each other. Um, and you'll get a nice good seal all the way around. And I'll do that and take a picture so you can see what it looks like. And that will give you a conductive um, seam right around the outside. You'll lay that on top of the, take the lid, lay it on top of the can and seal it up normally and you'll get a nice good tight RF seal. And I'll do the measurements to show how well that works. So, so to show how well it works, I really have to do three measurements. I need to do one in the open air, so just to get a reading of what the signal levels are in the room. Then I'm going to do one with the rubber gasket in place. So it's just basically like a normal ammo can and see how it does. I would expect that would offer pretty good protection based on other tests it might be around 20 dB or so. That's pretty good. That's not as good as what we'd like. We'd like at least 50 dB, but it's pretty good. And then finally I'll put in this conductive gasket and I'll retake the measurement and we'll see how much it improves. Our goal is to get at least 50 dB. Um, we'll probably see something a little more than that. Uh, again, the whole point of this is to try and create a Faraday cage, a box that's all sealed up that you can put your electronics in that you'll be confident that they would survive an EMP strike. Um, now, what happens if you have a different size can than mine? I'll talk about that at the end a little bit. Um, but what you would need to do is you need to pull your rubber gasket out and make some measurements of the width of the gasket and the thickness of the gasket. And I'll put a few different gaskets on my website so you can pick one that you think would work and order it for your, for your particular can if it's different size than mine. Now this particular can is so large that these gaskets come in 39 uh, inch lengths. It, one gasket's not quite enough to go all the way around it, so you'll have to buy two if you have a very large can like this. All right. So if you have a large can like this, 39 inches won't be quite enough. You have to get two gaskets, um, and they're not cheap. You know, these gaskets are fairly expensive, um, but they're a great solution. They look to me like they would last a very long time, and they give you a really tight RF seal, as what you'll see when we do this. All right, so again, we'll do our three measurements. We'll determine what the shielding effectiveness is of this, uh, and then I'll talk about some conclusions at the very end. All right, so first thing we need to do is conduct an open-air test. So what I've done is I've set up a, a frequency generator and amplifier to run at uh, 500 megahertz, 
I've set the spectrum analyzer up to receive the signal. And you may notice I've bent the antenna sideways. That's so that it's going to fit in the ammo can for the experiment. But we should be able to still measure the shielding effectiveness without any problem. So let me go ahead and turn on the, the signal generator. We should see the level rise up on the spectrum analyzer. Let me go ahead and zoom in here. Yes, so there we go. I centered it right at 500 megahertz. So it looks like it's about minus 31 dBm. Uh, that would be the open air value of minus 31 dBm. So again, we'll set now reset it, set it inside the ammo can, seal it up, and take a measurement and see how well the ammo can provides protection at 500 megahertz. Okay, so after the open air test, uh, we're going to run a test with the can sealed up with just the regular rubber gasket in place. So this would be essentially a measurement of if you didn't do anything but just use the can by itself. So I went ahead and turned on the signal generator, we'll turn it back off, we'll capture what the peak level is seen inside the can. Zoom in here. And that looks to me like about minus 59 dBm or so. So we got about uh, 28 dB of shielding, something like that. Um, even if we call it 30 dB of shielding, that's sort of what's expected, somewhere in that range of, a, of an ammo can or something sealed up with a with an exposed rim around the outside. Um, so what we'll do now is we'll conduct the experiment again, but this time we'll put in all of the gasketing um, and see how well it works. We place the spectrum analyzer inside the ammo can, sealed it up with the conductive gasket. Go ahead and turn on the frequency generator. Again, we're at 500 megahertz. We'll turn it back off, we'll open up the ammo can, we'll see what peak it captured. Now remember the open air value is minus 31, so we'd like to be somewhere like minus 81 or less to get 50 dB of shielding. Let's see how it did. Okay, that's pretty impressive. So, you zoom in here, the level that you can just barely see the 500 megahertz bump here, it's right here, and it looks like it comes up to minus 105. So, that was about 74 dB of shielding at 500 megahertz, which is really outstanding. Um, so, the ammo can, this method, it appears of using a conductive gasket in place of the rubber gasket and then sanding down the edges to get good metal contact around the lip. Seems to work remarkably well. I'll test it across all the frequency ranges but I wanted to show one on video here so that you get an idea of how well this performs. Alright, so we finished the experiment. Um, basically did three tests. We tested in the open air to see what the field levels were just from the generator here in the room. Um, then we tested with the rubber gasket in place, so that would just be an ammo can just sort of as you bought it. And then finally we tested with the, the conductive gasket put in place. And what we found was that the ammo can by itself did a pretty decent job, gave about 28 dB of shielding at 500 megahertz, which is certainly helpful, uh, but probably not adequate for EMP protection. So we put in the conductive gasket, we found that it then went down greater than 70 dB of shielding. Uh, which is excellent, that's outstanding. So certainly the conductive gaskets seem like a worthy investment if you're going to try and use an ammo can uh, as a Faraday cage. Now there are things to know about, about doing that. Um, just take this back apart. So the first thing is you have to remove that rubber gasket and you really need to measure it. In this case, you know, it depends on the size of the can and the size of the gaskets you'll end up with. You need to measure the width of the gasket and the thickness of the gasket. And my recommendation is this, buy a conductive gasket that's a little narrower in width than the rubber one. That makes it easier to go in the channel here, it just makes it easier to fit in there. But buy one that's a little thicker than the rubber gasket. And the reason for that is that 
the conductive gasket is just sort of a foam material underneath the conduct, uh, conductive film, and so it's very easy to compress. And so you want something a little bit thicker that will make good conductive contact all the way around the can. All right, so something a little bit narrower in width and something a little bit thicker than the rubber gasket. That'd be my recommendation. So if you happen to have the same kind of can I have, um, you can get the gaskets from my website. I'll, I'll list these ones that I have uh, on the website there. Now, again, for this large can, you need two gaskets. Uh, one won't be quite enough to cut and put around there. Um, and the idea of it is simple enough. Um, you know, you, you cut it into four pieces. Two go along the sides and one goes along the bottom and you butt them up against each other. It's got an adhesive material on the back so it'll stick in there quite well. Remember to prepare underneath it first by grinding away down to the, to the exposed metal. Same way around the rim of the can. Make sure you have exposed metal all the way around. And that's kind of it. And you can get a, uh, a very good Faraday cage out of an ammo can by doing that. Now if you happen to have a different size can, you'll need to pull your gasket out and make some measurements. It could be that this same gasket would work fine. Um, you can look and see how close it is to the gasket dimensions that I put on the website. But if you end up needing something distinctly different, like maybe your gasket isn't nearly as wide as this one, um, let me know and I'll see if I can find you something um, that would work for your particular ammo can as well. So anyway, my email is there on the website, disasterprepare.com, so you can contact me through that. And if you have any questions, of course, you can always post them on YouTube. Thanks for your time.